It's time for a Rugby League League, specifically RFL League One, the third tier Rugby League League in England, and Wales for that matter. Here are the RFL League One grounds. The Memorial Ground, Cornwall. It's not that often that you see a team named after a county, outside of cricket of course. I suppose that's partially because very few people have heard of Penryn. It is after all a very small town with just enough people to fill this very small stadium. And whilst it might not be the peak of architectural magnificence, it does look like a nice place to sit back, eat a pasty and drink some cider. Eco Power Stadium, Doncaster. Straight away we can see that this is a league of contrasts. Of course, this club is sharing a ground that was really built for Doncaster Rovers. They don't often come close to selling it out. However, it might be worth playing in a three quarters empty stadium if you consider the improved amenities, especially compared with the last one. The spectators are better protected from the elements and I assume there is probably a lot more than pasties and cider on the menu. South Leeds Stadium, Hunslet. This stadium is named for South Leeds. It's in a place called Beeston and is home to a club called Hunslet. Confusing, but it all checks out. Hunslet borders Beeston, and they're both in the south of Leeds. The ground itself is a one-stand wonder, but it's a big one. A double-tiered behemoth, sheltered by a big roof, and the seating is relatively steep. So all the spectators get a pretty good view of the ground, even if they are quite far away. Kruger Park. Keeley Cougars. This ground was open way back in 1876, before cars were invented, before rugby league was created, and most pertinently, before the Teletubbies were created. I think I had those in the wrong order. I mean, I don't want to downplay the importance of the Teletubbies, but just... Uh, the ground and the club were both founded in that year. Back then this was just a field that the newly formed club were granted use of. And look how far it's come. Alexander Stadium, Midlands Hurricanes. You'll have to disregard the temporary seating that was installed for the 2022 Commonwealth Games. That was back when it was Alexander the Great Stadium. The capacity has since been reduced by nearly 50%. It still remains primarily an athletic stadium. The Hurricanes are the only non-track and field tenant at this ground. And whilst the track might be a bit of a downside for rugby league fans, at least it's a nice vibrant shade of blue. Kingston Park, Newcastle Thunder. This club has been teetering on the edge in recent times. In fact, they actually announced that they would be withdrawing from League One. However, it seems that they've had a change of heart. Yes, yeah, surgeons can actually do that now. Their ground is pretty interesting. Three sides are fairly conventional. You've got the big all-seater stand on one side, terraces at the ends, one covered, one uncovered. Then over on the eastern side of the ground, you've got what appears to be a clubhouse with a small stand attached to it. All done up in red brick, unlike the other stands. Stadium CSM, North Wales Crusaders. No, that's not a typo, it's Welsh. We're in Wales, so the W stands for Wales. This ground did have a running track back in the day, and despite a major renovation about a decade ago, it still does. Although this one looks like it's primarily used for Colwyn Bay under 12s events rather than the Diamond League. One thing that I'm glad survived the renovation are the hedges that partially surround the perimeter of the stadium. White Bank Stadium. Oldham, more commonly known as Boundary Park. The ground, not the club. Come to think of it, it's also known as Ice Station Zebra. So this ground has a corporate name, a government name, and a nickname. It's called Ice Station Zebra because it gets rather cold, and of course zebras are cold-blooded reptiles. You see, I'm not an expert, but I do know a thing or two about botany. This ground is probably one of the league's best. I just always love to see a mix of old and new. Whether it's by design or just because they can only afford to redevelop the ground bit by bit. Crown Oil Arena, Rochdale Hornets. Apparently Crown Oil has been around since 1947. 
I'm really not sure how it survived all this time, because yes, nothing shines a crown like crown oil, but how many people own a crown? Or is King Charles single-handedly keeping them afloat? Anyway, this ground is just two years younger than Cougar Park, having opened in 1878. In fact, I think it was one of King Charles's first ribbon cuttings. Well, he was, I believe he was Prince Charles back in the 1870s. Derwent Park, Workington Town. Workington Town is an odd name, but when there's a town a few miles away called Cockermouth, every name is good by comparison. It's called Cockermouth because it's at the mouth of the Cocker River. There's nothing rude about it, okay? This ground, as you may have gathered, has a track. Not a running track, but a speedway track. Unfortunately, I don't believe races and rugby are held simultaneously. That would be a sight to behold, though. Oh, and yes, I do know it's pronounced Cockermouth, but it shouldn't be. And those were the RFL League 1 grounds. As for my favourite, well, I already said it was one of the league's best, so let's upgrade that to the best. Or, my favourite. There is a difference. Uh, please consider subscribing if you're new around here, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>